Kelly, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank and thanks for having us me. in your home and for making a phenomenal cup of tea. Yeah, it's, as well. Well, it's finished. You've drunk it all. So Good brew this one. Back. No, amazing. And I, I'm notorious for making a cup of tea and then just leaving it yeah. and so just coming back to it three hours later. Well, then, so I'm, then I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, there was so much that I wanted to run through with you today. And I, I don't really know where to start, so I think it would be good to start with now. Right. Um, how happy are you now with what you're doing at the moment? We're back to having football again, and you are part of probably the best team that there currently is in, in terms of football media right now, I would say. Um, how much you enjoy it? How much you love being a part of it? I love it. I'm, I'm so glad it's back, and I know it's not the same, and I know we can't wait for fans to come in, and it just... It, it's it's not right without having fans in the ground, but just the the games and the stories and the new players have come in and it feels like working in in these times everything's unpredictable and you don't know what you're going to get when you sit down to watch a match. There's a couple of times when you think, oh, we're going to be doing, I won't say a game, but you know we're going to be doing this game. And you think, oh, it's pro- be a bit, it could be a bit boring. This one could be, but it's not. Everything's got a story at the moment, so it's really really good fun and. You're right. I do. I love the people I work with. I have such a. I you love can them, tell that but as I well. Love, like it really comes across. But I think I think that's part of it is that I, I genuinely am interested in what they have to say, because um, we were talking a little bit off air that if you sit down with people who have got great experience in the game and who've played to a really high standard, who've won trophies, who've done it, you want to ask them questions. You want to say why do they do this and. Why do they do that and how do they do it? It's, it's just natural. You, you just sit, I, often I'll sit and watch a game and there'll be people, especially with the, with the radio stuff, stuff it's, it's slightly different because we're, we're all remote now. But when you sit down in a TV studio and you're just sitting and listening and it's really, it's just really nice. Do you ever want to wade in on any of the discussions? Do you ever find yourself being like... <laughs> no, because I get my chance if I have to. So it's... But, but also because um, I feel like if it's if it's an obvious answer, sometimes you have to get an obvious answer out of the way because you need to tell a story and sometimes that's the obvious thing. But usually, or hopefully, if I'm asking a question, it's what people want to know the answer to. So I'm asking it because I'm not sure what the, the sort of real take on that would be. So although sometimes I might um, go back and put another point of view it's only really to draw more out the guest it's, it's more in terms of that rather than say actually I completely disagree and what you're saying is absolute nonsense <laughs> and in my experience because <laughs> there's been nothing worse with that how do you find it like herding them sometimes because at <laughs> times it must be really hard to be like right we're going off piste here get back in line so we did the um sort of opening show of the season and we've got Jamie Redknapp in the studio and Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville were at Anfield on their own with a floor manager to keep them. So Brett was in charge of them. Then I realised early on they had a box of chocolate. So they've got Sugar Rush. Then, then they get to the end of it. Then, like Mike, about their kids. <laughs> yeah. then Micah comes down on a, um, on a Zoom call like later on in the show. And that one was a little bit... I just kept looking at Jamie uh, Redknapp to be like, the voice of reason. It was a, like, can we just... This all... Oh, my God. And by the end, once they realised that they could go a little bit off-piste, it just got... Just this side, I think, of manageably chaotic. But I like that. You know, I, I like when everybody talks like they do off screen. It's slightly more structured, but I like watching people who talk naturally. And I know from years of, of working that the conversations that you have off screen sometimes are the ones that you want to get on screen and that's what you're trying to draw out of people. There's that strange moment, isn't there, where you maybe are like 10 minutes before you go live on something and you suddenly realise in your head, you're like, stop talking, stop yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. You're going to say Don't something amazing now. and I want yeah, this yeah, yeah. for like in 10 minutes time. Yeah. And there's a little bit of that. And then sometimes you're like, tell me, tell me more about that. Because sometimes you want to be able to sort of refine it, especially right, on telly, okay. where you've got such a short space of time that you think, oh my God, just that point, we're going to come back to it, but just hold that thought. Um, whereas on radio, it's slightly different because you've got longer you can let people make a point in a more um, involved way, if you like. Do you think that's one of the things that 
maybe people don't often realise. Um, one of the clips that, or that actually, to be fair, it's a clip that's recycled a lot, is usually someone talking and then you'll get the behind the scenes audio of like a million people in your ear going like a hundred miles an hour, counting you down to three different BTs that you're about yeah, to yeah, go in yeah. the film, what have you. Um, do you think that's one of the things that people maybe don't realise when they're quite critical of maybe pundits about the way that they make points is they don't necessarily know that someone's got 25 seconds to get in and out of a piece of analysis and yeah. try and reference a, a really deep point that they want to make and then get out of it as well. Yeah, it's just, it's a learned skill, being able to be concise in what you're, you're trying to say. Um, I think radio is a great grounding for any pundit because you can give your explanations context and I think that really helps and I think it means that if you say something the wrong way, you can come back and say, it's not quite what I mean. You know, I, I don't mean that I don't mean that he's not good at this. I just mean that he's not consistent or he hasn't delivered it or he hasn't done it the, the right thing enough. But if you say it on television, it just comes across as, you know, this pundit slams this player yeah. and that's it. It's all very black and white. So there's a real skill involved in getting a lot of information into a short amount of time. You mentioned your grounding and, and like where you've come from and I just my first experience of not ever working with you, but I used to work at IMG, which yeah. a lot of people won't know, but that's the, the company that sort of is behind Premier League Productions, yeah. who create the feeds that go out everywhere. So if you're ever sitting in a bar in any random country, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like and you like see the, the Premier League on there, it's IMG that's and it. PLP yeah. that will have made it. And you were hosting shows there, and that was, I mean, 20. 13, yeah, 14 that would, maybe? Maybe earlier. Maybe yeah. early. No, I'd tell you when it was. It was, I started in the season, the 2011-2012 season there. And you had gone, b- before that, you'd done what you'd done, Sky Virgin Sports and Sky Sports News. Yeah, I had ESPN. ESPN. And Satanta. And I'd, I think I've, I've seen them all off. Ticked. I've seen them all off. <laughs> <laughs> you've ticked every watch. Yeah. You've gone through, through sort of every watch. So, did you know where you were going? No. Did you, were you just <laughs> no. kind of following your feet? Yeah, I uh, went into Sky Sports News from university because it was new and they employed a load of people who either had very little or no experience, who were just young and enthusiastic and just turned up and went, yeah, I'll make telly. <laughs> How hard can it be? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we all just sort of um, rocked up and, and did that. And I was there for nine years. But then that was, so that's quite kind of, sort of rolling news. I've also done um, like the shorter news sort of half hour programs, which is all very succinct. And I've done some pitch side reporting, which I did for Satanta and ESPN. I did a long sort of talk show thing for Satanta Sports News. I've worked in athletics. I've done sailing. I did the America's Cup. I've done, what else have I done? Oh, all different kinds of things. And I think... And then now, obviously, doing match days at, at Sky and then doing the, the radio for Five Live. And I do a, a preview show on PLP, on the international stuff. And it just, it's so helpful to, to do lots of different kinds of work because you, you take a little, you learn a little bit from everything. And you learn how to make a point quickly, although I'm not obviously demonstrating that now. This but is you learn perfect. This is Don't a, change this it. Is a lo- this is this is this a is longer your, form, this longer is your form, form content. And you can yeah. just go for your um, life. So yes, yeah, so you learn you learn how to kind of narrow a question down, but you also learn how to open it up. And what I should say is when I'm when I'm talking about all of this is I'm not saying I do this in every in every instance. These what I'm saying is this is best practice, and you learn what best practice is in each of those different situations. Just because I don't always stick to it or don't often stick to it doesn't mean I don't know what it is <laughs> or what it should be like. Did you have a did you have a focus in mind when you were doing all of these different things? Were you ever like, one day this is where I'd like to go no, to? No, I think um, probably I, I would always have wanted to do live Premier League football. I think for some people, um, there was a, a boss at BBC Sport who always said, I, I want to employ people whose pinnacle is working on a World Cup final. And that is... I, I get that. I get that that's kind of the, the pinnacle of everything. Is that it, though? But I, well, see, I'm not sure anymore because I've worked on a Champions League final for the radio and I've worked on big Premier League games and, and big decisive games. And I feel like, I think probably I'm more personally involved in that. I, I kind of, I, I, I get the emotion of it more than I would a World Cup. I mean, different if it were England or Scotland. God, <laughs> that would be amazing. But if, if, um, it would be different in, in that circumstance. But I think with, with 
the teams that you watch week in, week out, you have a, even if it's, even if it's not the team you support, you do have an emotional yeah. connection to them that I think you need to have. You need to understand why it's important. I do get it. I do understand the point of view that the World Cup final would be seen as the pinnacle of pretty much anything. It's probably like the most, alongside the Olympics, the most watched sporting yeah. event on the planet. And I do understand that. But for me, one of the things that I would struggle with in terms of viewing that as a, as a goal would be that if be you, you top out. Yeah. You do it, and it's like, oh, okay, that doesn't that the, the football really is is actually it's not finite. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't end. You know, there's no ending point. So yeah. the moment that you put that on a pedestal and you do that thing, how do you then yeah. you sort of be like, right, I go on to the next thing? Whereas, yeah. like you said, there's a. But also, I just don't. I don't think it's not that I don't. <laughs> I feel You're like I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah. You have I don't BBC not want to work out. Yeah. Kelly doesn't want to do it. No, no, no. <laughs> she's fine. Get someone else in. She's, she's like, like it. Oh, yeah. right, bothered. She doesn't like it. She doesn't <laughs> like, but I, I just don't think it's the pinnacle anymore. She said, I unless loved, it's Scotland. <laughs> but I loved working on a Champions League final and I loved, you know, going and being part of all of that and I've loved working on World Cups. That like really, it's not so much the final for me, it's the tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I agree going and being kind of immersed in that world because it is a bubble and it is unlike anything else and you just go and you kind of live it for a few weeks and and I think that's amazing but it's it that's why I love tournament football but a Champions League final feels like you've squeezed a World Cup into a day that they, yeah. it, you know with everything that goes on around the city and then you go along and you're mixing with groups of fans and I always like try and go out and get into the middle of it as much as I can. Yeah, because that, particularly that bit when I take over the city, it's yeah, nice, isn't because, it? Yeah, because I think, again, that's part of understanding it. It's part, <laughs> this is me trying to justify it. Like, this is me trying to justify going, going into fan pops. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I turn on the beer, beer why, why the beer spilled on her? She came in like dripping in like, alcohol and <laughs> sweat. It's like, but, um, but I do think you need to have that understanding. You need to have been and experienced it and to have soaked all of that up. And even if you never mention it, it comes across. And it's why if I've ever worked at a, a World Cup or a Euros or something, trying to get out, trying to get to games as much as you can, trying to go and stand in fan parks, go and just go around the city and soak up what's there. Because otherwise you are in a telly bubble and you have no idea what's going on. It's all about the the... The presentation of it and it isn't football isn't that football is emotional yeah it's it very is sterile so atmosphere, emotional isn't it? yeah we should probably explain that shouldn't we that, that at major tournaments is often like a little tv village yes and there's like a weird it's, it's sort of fenced off i yeah. remember in russia in particular yeah fenced off mm -hmm. cordoned off right by red right square by kremlin, yeah. right by the kremlin sort of overlooking it but no one could get anywhere near. No. And there was like a, I remember it was like glass windows. So there's all these people, like, it was like a zoo. Yeah. People yeah, on the yeah, outside yeah. looking in, sort of like trying but, to look but then, But then I do quite like a TV compound as well, because when you've been working for as long as I have, and as discussed, worked for as many people as yeah. I have, <laughs> and with as many people, it's always so sociable. It's really lovely. Like there yeah, were, you get to know everyone, Well, there right? were times we'd come off air, and I'd, if I'd done like a day shift or whatever, it, you'd come off air at whatever, whatever time it was in, in Russia. And we may be sit and have a little gin and tonic. And I was going to say on the balcony, but you know what the compound was like. It's a it's metal these kind of steel thrown like up <laughs> sort of, yeah, yeah, like temporary constructions. But there was a, a sort of ground floor and a top floor. And where we, we kind of found our place in the little corner, and people would be coming in and out for the evening games or doing their. Hi, how are you? We've been standing there with a little, <laughs> it was a vodka tonic because it was Russia. <laughs> that, was, that was our concession. And then, um, but it was just really, it, that's important as well because, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if there is a perception that everybody who works for different companies are all rivals. Yeah. And it, it's not. We've all worked with each thing, other. That, though. I think I probably think that, when, when people a... had jobs for life and all yeah, that. Yeah, well, there was four channels, mm. right? That it was like you either worked for A or B, and if you yeah. didn't, then you kind of had to have a side. Yeah, but everybody you know? kind of moves. Up. I remember once standing at the at, on the ground floor, and Righty was working for the telly things and I can't remember what had happened but something had annoyed him and all I could hear was clattering from this balcony above and I'll go where's Kels where's Kels <laughs> and I'm like that I'm downstairs <laughs> so he's like running down going, you never guess what's happened and I'm like right okay and I'm in the little we had the tiny little room that was our our radio studio and um they were I like was, little cabins aren't yeah they? yeah and I mean most of it's taken up by the technical equipment and then there was a I mean a, a table sort of this 
tiny size in front of us, like not even a card table. And sort of sitting on the, and I was sitting there with um, whoever our studio guest was at the time. The writer sort of came in and went, oh my God, this is how I know. And I went, mm-hmm. I said, we, I've got about 10 minutes and then, then we're on air. And he's like, right, well, I'm going off, I'm going off. And then <laughs> off he'd go back up to watch whatever he was doing, whatever game he was doing. But it was just, it was just really nice. I think Gary was over there, Phil Neville was doing different yeah, course, things. There yeah. were so many people that you work with on and off and they come around and then, but then also you got the chance to go and walk out on the streets where, you know the street that had all the lights on that I didn't yeah, know the name so of when I was there. Let me break it. So basically by the Kremlin, yeah. there's a there's a huge square called Red Square, yeah. which is just amazing and standing in the Kremlin yeah. sort of overlooks it. But then off it, there was all these like really cool old school streets that they'd almost lit up in the colours of different nations and had flags over the top of it. Yeah. And then there were just groups of fans gathering. there was gathering, the one that there? had like a canopy of fairy yeah, lights across it. But almost about, about a mile, yeah. must be. Straight line. I don't want to exaggerate, but it must have been it's about huge. a mile. And then, but there was that. And then there was another day when Russia beat Spain. Didn't, and Russia played Spain. Did they yeah. beat Spain? I think that Spain had a stinker, didn't they? Yeah. But I, I remember, I remember, because I was in the fan part yeah. for that. Well, we... I th- I'm sure it was that game I went to, and because Spain had loads of injuries, didn't they? Yeah. Or they'd already qualified. I can't remember what it was, and that's terrible. But you know what it's like in these tournaments. M- mate, you do a million games, and, and you they get just to merge. Anyway, I, I was coming back from whatever wh- whatever game it was, and I was coming back, and Russian people had just taken to the streets, and they'd been they'd lifted all these restrictions on people congregating in the street, so people had just taken full advantage yeah. of this and they were going on there and they were beeping their horns obviously flags out but they were crawling because traffic was at a standstill and I got into work and I'm, I got in with about five minutes to spare I could not get through the crowds because it was so busy and there were thousands of people on the street but then you go on air and you can say you know I'm, I'm, seen, I'm late this has yeah. happened and that's happened it's been amazing and and but even more than that, I think it gives you an energy and whatever that energy is, you take it on air with you and you're enthused again and you're yeah. kind of, you know, you, you just kind of get a, a rush from it. And I think that comes across. Well, we saw that with uh, the title win. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? Because that was probably one of, you know, when sometimes the stars just align mm. a little bit and even though the fans weren't there, it yeah. did kind of feel like everything just fell into place beautifully with yeah. Jurgen being over and then you having to send him oh, off and well, everything. Oh, yeah, so when they got, when they got the trophy yeah. and, they, and they did the trophy lift and, and we were at the game and, and, you, and you're sort of thinking, well, it hadn't been great form since they'd actually won it or since um, Chelsea had beaten Man City. And you're thinking, well, Liverpool haven't been on great form. Chelsea could do something here. They've beaten City. They've, and you don't really know. And then it turned out to be one of those ridiculous games. There's a row on the touchline. There's loads of goals. It's all, ca- it's all just a bit chaotic and it felt like a party atmosphere. And then the most amazing thing that they did, because to lift a trophy in an empty stadium is a bit rubbish. And we'd seen all those pictures of people doing it, of teams doing it. And it just looked a little bit sad. And I just, there was a part of me that just felt really sorry for the, the players who, who had to do that. But because it was at night, the whole ground was dark and all you could see was the was the stage and the lights. And then the fireworks went off around the thing. Oh, my God, they've done this. They honestly, they did so well to create an atmosphere inside that that stadium. And then Jürgen came over to talk to us and Matt McCann, who's the, the press officer, came over and he said, so as you see him coming over, you know, Jürgen's on on his way. Can't miss so, him. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's not small. Off he comes, and goes, <laughs> big smile. And you're like, oh, Jurgen. And Matt sort of waved and pointed at the um, rest of the players because I'd heard you'll never walk alone start to play. And in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, how nice it's going to be. You'll never walk alone in the background while we do the Jurgen Klopp interview about winning the league and getting the trophy. Lovely. And then Matt sort of waved and pointed, and I, I sort of looked over Jurgen's shoulder, and all the players were lined up with their arms around oh, each other, goodness. singing You'll Never Walk Alone. And I thought, oh my God, he's got to go. Meanwhile, the producer is, because it had all overrun, there's a certain amount of breaks that when you're talking about all the voices in your, voices in your head, <laughs> and, um, and he's talking about all the, um, all the things that had to happen. You had to get a break in, you had to talk to this. It was, it, and this is all regulated by Ofcom, it's all good. Cool. Kind of, and he's like, we need, to get, we need to get Jürgen in before the break. Oh my God. And, I, and then the next thing he sees, 
as he's sort of trying to pay attention to a million different things, is me going, it's okay, Jürgen, come back in a minute. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, it's all right, he's coming back. He's like, I, oh my God. So anyway, he was as good as his word. He went off and he sat, and even without being reminded, he turned straight away and came back and it was all lovely and you get that gorgeous shot of them all sort of singing together and that's going to be, you know, that's invaluable, that, that moment. That lives forever, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's not just that he would want to be part of it, it's that even yeah. purely from a non-emotional, practical point of view, you have that shot and it's just a great shot. I think Liverpool fans will forever thank you for doing that as well <laughs> like that and that it could I mean, so easily have gone the other way though imagine I could so easily have gone like if i hadn't caught his eye if i hadn't noticed what there's a i could have just gone oh how lovely we've got lovely background music for the interview but isn't this nice yeah, isn't, this, <laughs> isn't this isn't this stirring People will love and then, this. Yeah, yeah and then forever there will be i think it was i think it was arsenal fans were talking about was it when they won the league at Anfield or they won? Probably the when they won it at White Hart Lane. Oh, is it? Oh, my God, it, <laughs> it, but there was one where it, uh, someone wasn't in the interview. Well, someone wasn't in all the celebrations because they were being interviewed and they missed out on the celebrations. Right. And I think it was Arsenal fans who were, who were sort of going, oh, because we don't have that picture. We don't have that or yeah. that. And more importantly, that player well, doesn't get to celebrate it? it. They Yeah, but they don't, they miss the moment. Yeah. And that's, you sort of, yeah, it, you've got to be a bit human about it. But I swear to God, it could easily have gone. It could easily have gone the other way. It, it worked out perfectly. And I think it was like what you were saying about being at World Cups and stuff. Like if you're someone that is able to immerse yourself within it and realise what this means or yeah. what it means to be a part of it, particularly at that time. Because I remember we spoke before that, actually, didn't we? And you were yes. saying that there was like, well, I was asking you whether there was a pressure yeah, to, yeah. to be a certain way because there was no fan. Yeah, and, and, and trying to kind of deliver for fans. Yeah, That's yeah. the thing because, you know, we're, we're lucky when, when we get to go, but it's not the same. And, you know, that, that night was, was special and, and it was, you know, I did, and it's a very overused word and it sounds a little bit twee to say it, but, you know, I did feel really privileged to be there because it was so limited. How and many it, and people were there? That, 200? 100? It, yeah, and, and nothing. And it's, it, it did feel really special. But I think that, um, that you're, you're right about, about sort of capturing that moment for the, for the fans. And, but, but you can't ever behave like a fan. You still have to be thinking. So you have to kind of carry that emotion and try and have some empathy, but you've still got to think in a, in a logical sense. You can't ever let that take over. Did you speak to your dad on that night? Was he sort of living it through you? No. Was he there? Well, yes, he was there. And then the next thing, um, I'm sort of tr got off across the pitch and I was like, oh, it's all finished. It's all finished. It's nice. And then I went past and I didn't realise all the confetti. Did you realise on the night, all the confetti had little messages from fans. I think like one of the sponsors, I think maybe Standard Charter, had got Liverpool fans to send them messages and every piece of confetti had a message from a supporter who couldn't be there. So the idea was that they blasted out this confetti and the fans were there with their messages of support that's so and that's nice. a, it's a really lovely idea um so I'm sort of walking past and sort of noticing this and sort of like let's go back in my car and go home then that's kind of that's off I go then and sort of and um and he meanwhile was in the director's box having you know he's gone yeah well, we can't obviously no food and no this because of covid and people can't come in and whatever and he and Peter Moore and Rushy were sitting there having a glass of champagne. I was like, <laughs> "Thanks for the invite." Oh, yeah, but I see that I hadn't been because he'd been COVID tested uh. because he had to go and be part of the presentation. He'd been COVID tested, and I was amber zone rather than red zone, so I couldn't have gone in anyway. There is, there but is still, still. I was like, "Oh, come on, <laughs> stop me, out, Dad." You know, to roll me a bottle down or something. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it like fizzes everywhere. It's fine. I'll <laughs> take a bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did wonder though. Did you ever have? And I'm sure you've been asked this loads and loads of times. Did you ever feel all the way through your career, or at any point in your career, any of the pressure that comes with being associated with a legend like that? Um, not prob probably, but I can't really remember. I think at the beginning it was sort of. Um, I think I tried to distance myself from it, and I think now I'm much more comfortable with the fact that my dad played football. It's like it, it felt as though I was trying too hard to kind of be my own. 
I person. Can do this as me. And, and really yeah. sort of. Yeah. And and then there were times when I'd have to work with him, or something would come up, and I'd get oh my god, and and feel quite awkward about it. Um, but I think part of growing up and and being and it's taken me far too long to get to that point but is that you go well he did do that but just as his success isn't isn't my success then what I do isn't isn't hasn't got any bearing on what he does we're different people and I can be proud of him without living off him if that makes sense there's a I, I really struggle to to make that distinction early on I always felt like if I was proud of him or I mentioned him or it came up then I felt like I was living off him a bit, that mm. I was kind of, you know, or living off his name and his reputation. But I can be both. I can be his daughter and I can have my job. They're, they're different things. But I do think there is uh, another thing that might be quite helpful now is that I feel like as just as audience members, as football fans, just as people in general, like we we care more about what people come from. We like that, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, do you remember back in the day it used to be like, oh, never show who you support? Or never show yeah. your personality or, or a little bit of who you are, whereas now we really engage a bit. Yeah, and I think it's it's better to be open about it and to talk about it because I think there's a difference between supporting someone and being biased in your work. And I think they are, they're, they're different things. And I do feel differently when I'm working. You just put your work head on and, yeah. and it's different. Having talked about empathising with fans, that's not... a a team specific thing that is you you should understand Did, was it you talked to peter drury about this yeah and he said and he was saying it's big it's big to somebody for some reason no matter how much you don't like this game no, or you think this doesn't matter my favorite thing it's anyone the best said so far thing. is like it's, because at nil nil it could be someone's 10th birthday yeah. it could be the one game they'll see all season they could have come from anywhere in the yeah. world and you can be you can be objective and say it wasn't a great game and you can be this, but it matters to somebody somewhere and you have to drag out, if necessary, why that matters. Yeah. Also, you know, how, how on earth can you ask somebody to watch if you don't care? How can you say to somebody, you should watch this? And they say, well, you know, th why should I watch it? And you have to know what the answer to that is, even if you never refer to it, even if you're not, this is a big game because, you know, but, but you should know and, and it, it should it matters to somebody somewhere for a reason and you need to know what, what that is. Um, which, I can't remember what your original well, question no, was. was. No, I got off on a tangent just, just because I love Peter Drury. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the idea of, more than anything, that you, you're able to be yourself a little bit more and, yes. and, and, and show a little bit more yourself. And I was going to ask you actually as well, why do you think it is, and this is a really difficult question to answer because I'm basically asking you to be a bit arrogant really, why do you think it is that people love listening to you? I, I'm not sure... Uh, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether they do, or not, but I, they do. But this I think, is the thing: is that everyone feels very comfortable in your company. But I think, but then, I don't know. I think the way the way I try to do it, and and what I do, and and maybe the way I do it is in fashion at the moment, and maybe it will go back to being a much straighter, slicker way of doing things in in future, and and the way that I do it will be seen as kind of a little bit clumsy and and too relaxed right. and but but you but you understand these these things sure, go in, cyclical, in right? trends yeah and um but i think what i try to do is um care about it and that that isn't always <laughs> that isn't always possible it's not you know i'm not always going into every game going this is going to be amazing and this is <laughs> i'm so happy i'm here and it's like that that would be unrealistic but i i always try to find what what is important about it even if you know, sometimes at like 70 minutes, you're going, oh my God. We haven't um, had a shot on target. Please <laughs> yeah, someone do yeah. something. We haven't had a shot on target between teams that are 13th and 14th in the league and there's nothing at stake. And we've got a half now of show to somehow <laughs> yeah, analyse it. Exactly. At which point you're going, guys, you really need to bring your A game here because I've got nothing. I can't ask you a question about this. <laughs> um, but it's, I, I, you try and understand why people care and ask questions that you think people want to hear and appreciate your guests appreciate the pundits and try and if I think my my job isn't to catch them out my job isn't to um isn't to to kind of necessarily get anything out of them other than what they're trying to say to help them if they need it and somebody depending on how far along their kind of career path they are 
they don't often need it but it's to get the best out of them because the reason you get the best out of them is because you want the viewer to have the best experience so you'll say so when somebody's trying to make a point like we were talking about radio and, and telly differently if if somebody's saying something and you think that's I don't think that's what you want to say I think you're what you want to say is in there but it's so you're trying to, to kind of get that out of them and that obviously that happens a lot more in, in radio than, than telly and telly you've got to be better with your questions and sharper with your questions and sometimes that means that it's a, a more surface question but it, it's nice when you've got a bit of time to be able to to get something out of them and and I just I like what I'm doing and I like the people I work with and I think that's part of it and I think if if you can create that atmosphere then people watching will feel part of it and will feel comfortable watching or listening to it but I think can I so that you don't have to say it <laughs> I think that people really enjoy listening to you because they feel like they're sitting down with their mate to watch the football okay is that something that, is that yeah. something you consciously do or no, is that just who you are? You, you have that sort of natural it's warmth. It's not. It's not. Um, I don't. I don't consciously try to do anything. I think probably throughout the whole of my career, from early days, I've probably tried on different kind of personalities right. and tried different ways of doing things and watched people and thought, oh, they do this. I'd quite, I think it's a bit like um, you know when you're at school and you try lots of different handwriting, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, eventually yeah. you really kind of settle on your own and you. And then, but you take little bits and pieces. But you've always got your own sort of. And that's sort of where I've settled and this is how I do it. And I, I can do the other stuff and I can do very straight and if I have to. But I don't feel comfortable doing it. It's not my way. Um, so I, I don't know. I just, I, I, that's just how I talk. <laughs> but I, mean, I, I think, yeah, I, I think people are loving it at the moment. And I really hope that this is a trend that, uh, continues for as long as possible because I think it's really healthy. Yeah, uh, it's a and really I think the nice best, way of being. I think the the people that I've always thought were the best have always had that to them. Like you look at Des Lynham is the best, and you look at the, what he did and what he did was include people and make them feel that he knew what they were thinking. You know, all those kind of one liners before the England work? games. Shouldn't you be at work? Always that, my mind. But it's but it's it's matching people where they it's meeting people where they are, and and trying to be be part of it and I think and equally having said about the enthusiasm and things matter math, how much things matter I also think it's important sometimes every not not every time but every now and again to go yeah that wasn't great like I just I think that's okay you know I don't I don't want to be sold a lie I don't want somebody to sit there and go well there were some really great uh points to take out of that if if, if there wasn't if it's not yeah. it's not you know you kind of but you can say that was a that wasn't a great game. But this is why it's significant. This is what happened. This is, and that's where I'm. That's where I'm really lucky as well. Like I work with brilliant producers, because they are <laughs> on it. That is so it good. It is so it's good. Coming out one way yeah. or the other. <laughs> yeah. And um, we we've run out of time. Okay. And I've got like honestly, <laughs> I could do another five hours. Of this but I wanted to finish up. Yeah. With three quick ones. I would stay, but I do have a school. You've run. Literally, got to go and get your kids. Yeah, oh, that was going to say you've got a balanced life as well yeah. as doing all the rest. This of is it. like when I'm doing the radio and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> feeding the kids and then packing the food Got away the and then getting the you. little box out, a box of tricks and kind of going, then the game starts and I'm like that, right, shower. And then <laughs> go, second go, half go. starts, bed. <laughs> it's like military precision. Yeah, exactly. um, okay, greatest tips, the best thing or the thing you're most proud of. Yeah. What's next and um, who is the person that keeps you grounded when all the madness is kicking off? Um, the best thing, uh, the most significant thing, it wasn't necessarily the thing I've enjoyed the most, or although I did enjoy it, but was the Liverpool homecoming parade because I've been doing lots of Sky Sports news, lots of auto cue, question, answer, question, answer, thank you very much. Then, you know, sort of very formulaic. formulaic stuff. And it's it's different now, actually, Sky Sports news, a lot more scope, but it, that's how it was. And to go and do something that free flowing and to hold it for eight hours or whatever it was we were on air just felt really grown up. And I felt like it was a, a, a an important moment for me. Um, apart from the fact it was an important moment generally for me personally that was a, that was a big one uh, the second what's one next? was what's next or what's one thing you want to do apart from the World, the World Cup, Cup final, World Cup final obviously, obviously. <laughs> um, I, don't, I like what I'm doing I don't and, and I never plan and never have planned you know even when I 
even when I had the, the girl, my girls are nine and 12 now. And even when I had them as babies, I didn't even, I didn't even have a, well, I'm going to take this much time off and do this much work and then come back and do this. I never, I never did. I, I sort of did a little bit of piecemeal and then came, came back. So I, I don't plan and I just, I like what I'm doing. So there's no reason, just don't just nice and steady <laughs> don't upset anybody <laughs> it's kind of don't, and 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 remember to to work hard that when I'm doing something that I love remember that you don't keep it just by sitting on your ass and not doing anything you keep it by working at it and um trying to it's why talking like this is really good because it reminds me to do all those things that I should do and being grounded is being at home that's just you know sitting with <laughs> sitting with my girls who go oh and it, um, my daughter, my 12 year old, came running upstairs the other day. She just had the radio on in the kitchen. She went, Someone just mentioned you on the radio. And I went, What, what do you mean someone mentioned me on the radio? And she had five live on in the kitchen. And someone had mentioned me. And I'm like, You do know I'm on that. <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> she's like, Yeah, but not like when you're on it. Like when you're just, it's not, when you're talking, it's just you, but someone else. So obviously <laughs> someone more interesting than I did <laughs> mentioned your name. And I'm like, Oh. She, they get, well, they get really. Into yeah. perspective. <laughs> she said, she said about my dad, and she was very little, and she said, she said about him. Do you, do you know he's on YouTube? And I said, well, yeah. I mean, that's not, you know, the main thing about him, but yeah, he's he like, did other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also that's that's her. The, when well, when she was little, that was her barometer. That was like, I, I'm, I'm measuring him by the fact. Oh my God. He's on YouTube. That was like the pinnacle. He couldn't have reached anything any no, higher. Nothing like your kids to contextualise yeah, it for you and just make you understand where you sit in the yeah, pecking exactly. order. Yeah, exactly. Just not yeah. And um, somebody somebody asked her, my youngest as well. They went, you know, do you watch mommy when she's on the telly? And she went, if somebody else puts it on, I won't turn it off. That's what she said. I was like, well, thanks. thanks. <laughs> she's like, I guess. She's like, well, she said I quite like the football. She said, but when she's doing it, I mean. <laughs> Your biggest fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Kelly, thank it. you so much. Oh, thank you so it's much. It's been amazing fun. And oh, um, after you've done the World Cup final, we'll sit down again. Yes, exactly. <laughs>